Giga Texas is 44% complete, and the pace we expected from the first of the year is holding steady. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. There's been another jump in the expected completion date, so stick around for that. But first, let's cover what's been going on over the past month, especially the last two weeks. Geopiers. While these looked to be done-ish, or maybe in a holding pattern, that hasn't been the case. They finished the Geopier work in the southwest corner and immediately headed to the northwest corner where we believe the battery cell factory will be. It's the last section of the emerald footprint where they hadn't yet been done. Geopiers are similar to traditional pilings, but instead of placing a steel or concrete rod into the ground, they bore a hole and use a heavy ram to compact gravel into it, which spreads out into the soil, making for a firm anchor. These take time to install, and the fact that there's a very small corner remaining in which to place them is encouraging and supports the current timeline. Footings. These have long looked like they have just a few more planned rather than filling the entire footprint, but it's increasingly clear that this entire space will be used as a building. Just since December 28th, the number of completed footings has increased from 53% of the site to 86% further supporting the projected completion date. Steelwork. If you've watched even two drone videos over the past month, you don't need to be told how quickly the shell of the building is going up. Thousands of square feet are added every day, and since December 28th, framed segments on site has increased from only 3% of it to now being 33%. While the current pace may not be sustainable as staging areas become more scarce, it's entirely possible to see a more or less complete skeleton around the end of March. Roof covering. These are likely the easiest to add, but the tracker only assigns half weighting towards completion since there's a second part to it which is applying the actual finished layer. In the concrete cathedral, where stamping will take place in the southeast corner, that means pouring a layer of concrete to the top to give the structure additional weight and integrity, both of which help when using the gantry cranes inside to move massive equipment around. Over the steel areas, it likely means a layer or two of insulation with a sealed cover atop it. Interior. Despite seeing significant work to pour finished floors and run utilities, the tracker continues to assign a completion of 0% to the interior. If we were to break it down by every aspect, the list would be long, and once the exterior walls go up, impossible to track. On the plus side, we are now seeing wall segments going up, so that's very promising. We know the whole site will need sprinklers, power, climate control, but beyond that, it's a big old box of mystery. We have to know which areas require plumbing or certain types of equipment to have a reasonable guess as to when it will be finished. In Shanghai, it was four months from exterior walls to interior completion, and that was true for phase one and the much larger phase two. Well, I have full confidence that Texas will maintain the same pace for their interior completion, so once we can no longer see inside a particular area, the four-month countdown will begin for that part of the site on the tracker. We are definitely in the steep part of the S-curve, but I remain cautiously optimistic in these numbers. There's been a lot of new work on other parts of the site that aren't accounted for in the tracker, but the pace continues to quicken in the areas being tracked, so it appears that these are entirely separate crews which do not slow progress in one area to begin work in another. So let's take a look at the site map and the new estimated date of completion and see how it's changed. But first, a thank you to my Patreons who enjoy bonus content, early access, and keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. I can't do it without you guys, so thank you so much. So here's the site as of today, and let's roll it back to December 14th and see how it's changed week by week. The orange is footings, the gray is steel or concrete frames, and the dark gray indicates a first layer of covering on the roof. In the next week or two, I'll need to start tracking the interior as the walls are completed, so what color should I use for that in the tracker? My head says blue, but my heart says Tesla red. Let me hear your pick in the comments. 
So what does this uptick in progress mean for the estimated date of completion? Well, I hope you're sitting down or at least have exceptional balance because at the current pace, the factory will be complete after 435 days of work on or about October 2nd. I know, right? This sounds wild, even to me, even having seen the progress at other Gigafactory sites, but this makes sense in consideration of the fact that the Gigapress is already being installed in the casting area, and on the Q4 earnings call, Elon stated he expects to see some Model Y and Cybertruck production in 2021 from Texas, with mass production in 2022. The Cybertruck is a whole new vehicle made in a whole new way. The factory will need to be substantially complete to even install the equipment, let alone begin trial production. The current floor count breakdown is 31% single floor, 53% with two floors, and 16% with a third floor or higher. Very few segments have a fourth floor, so I'm not breaking those out separately, but let me know in the comments if that's something anyone's interested in. It won't change much, it's just a few areas above the loading docks on the west side, but, you know, let me know. One concern I've seen raised is that the tracker doesn't capture a wide enough spectrum of data points, that I'm effectively wearing blinders to just look at certain aspects while ignoring others, or giving them no weight, no consideration. And this is fair, but more data doesn't always paint a more complete picture. And if I am stuck at the bottom of a well, I won't have a full understanding of what's going on at the surface, but I can tell you the weather and I can see when the sun is setting. If those are the most critical elements, the additional insight doesn't lead to a much different conclusion. When I did my Q4 earnings estimate last week, I beat Wall Street consensus on five of the eight metrics I looked at, even from the 500 foot overview. These numbers change every week, so if you want to understand more about how it's evolved over the last eight weeks, just go watch those videos. While my Patreons do get extra insight, you can understand the methodology behind the tracker for free just by watching all the videos. And if you want to keep tabs on this, you know, subscribe, because I do put these out every week. Now, clearly the rate of 5% increase per week is not sustainable, since it would mean completion around April 19th, which is impossible on account of the time needed to finish the interior, but it's likely we'll pick up another 4-5% to a week for the next 4 weeks or so until we get closer to the top of the S-curve, at which point it'll slow down again, but I remain reasonably confident in these numbers, even though they keep changing. So stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the eve of Punxsutawney Phil's A Big Day.